Hi everybody, Aid here from Scladale Skidmore Second Hand Tyres. Welcome to part 25 of the boat restoration. Just uh, following on from the last episode, I'll be welding up the upstand and fixing it onto the trailer spine and then that should make it possible for me to start doing the painting, get the boat turned back over onto the trestles and start looking at painting. I've just welded a, a captive nut onto the what am I doing that? Just welded a captive nut onto the bottom plate of the uh, uh, base for the winch, which uh, it actually disappears down inside the box section, so I can't put anything on the inside of it. Uh, it was threaded, but it was threaded for an imperial bolt, I think. Certainly, it was a lot smaller than. 10mm, uh, 10 10mm 10 wouldn't even touch it. So uh, I've just welded that on and then I'm going to clean up all the paintwork on the on the bits of box section and whatnot and get them ready to weld together for the mount in the winch on. And then we'll see what happens. <laughs> closely at the welding. These are only two mil rods and the machine is actually the biggest one I can get for welding through a 13 amp plug. If I wanted the next size up I'd have to go for a 30 amp socket outlet or a power outlet from the fuse board. So um, I've gone for this, the biggest one I can get. I mean it was recommended I only use two mil rods but I think I probably can go up to 2.5 if I nip in and get some from uh, Clark's but uh, I've hit a snag which I sort of half knew about which was um, when you're welding with somewhere where there's threads involved there's a possibility it may actually weld the thread to uh, itself and that's what's happened here this it, it may just be a characteristic of the stainless steel bolts, just the same as I had with that U-bolt where that got totally thread bound uh, both sides of the U-bolt. Um, but where it's gone into the captive nut that I welded on, it is now sort of virtually seized. I've got it, I backed it out quite a way where this nut, uh, this thread was flush with the bottom plate. and. I couldn't get any further so I've wound it back in again and it sort of got to a point where it's, it's solid again. So what I'm going to do, this isn't a, really a way, I don't know, of um, getting a seized bolt out of a nut, but I'm going to grind this off flush and file it flat and then centre pop it and drill out down the shaft to hopefully make it so it, it can give a little bit. If it shears off somewhere, then I'll just go to plan B, which will be to use a shorter bolt and a nut on the inside of the top plate. Because it's on the side which is pulling the winch down onto the um, plate, it's not un going to be under any stress, it's going to be under a force that's just pushing it down against the, the plate, because the back end is the bit one where it's in tension. So I'm going to try this now and if it works then all well and good. If it doesn't work there's another solution to the problem.
it in easy. It looks like that may have worked. but I've got a die I can, or a, whatever you call them, I can run down there and clean it up, so that's okay. Yeah, definitely needs a clean up. I'll run a tap, that's the word I was looking for, I'll run a tap down it and uh, that should be okay. Jobs are good. There we go, that goes in nice and uh, easily now. I believe there's a grease of some sort that they coat the threads with. I heard someone talking earlier about it doing some welding. Urchfab, his name is Matt from Urchfab. He's uh, welding together an old Ford Anglia 100E, one of the old rounded shaped ones, pre uh, letter fix on the um, number plate and a Mazda MX-5 to make a, uh, I don't know, some sort of hot rod that uh, he's going to use for drifting and track days and things. Uh, he's from down the west country, quite interesting and puts my little bit of world into shame really because uh, he's a bit of a master. Could do some great work. Right, uh, I've got a little bit more welding to do on that. It's getting, it's getting quite heavy. I'm going to weld the six holes down the sides to the tops of the box section and then I shall be grinding. It's Sunday today so I won't do it today. I'll uh, grind the uh, chicken poo flush or as flush as I want it and that will make it a, nice, a bit neater and when people won't be afraid to touch it anymore. I say I think the two mil rods are really uh, just a little bit too thin. I think I could probably use two and a half mils uh, and this is right on the limit of what I can weld with it anyway. These plates are about two and a half mil, and the sides one and a half to two mil. Uh, as I say, I didn't really want to start getting involved in uh, running out a dedicated 30 amp socket outlet, which would be one of those big red plastic ones for this uh, for the welder because I can't move it anywhere. Then it's it's going to be tied to one place and. Uh, because it doesn't come with a great big long extension and I certainly don't want to be putting uh, a load of extra cable on it just for uh, the sake of that because of um, where you're going to store it all gets too involved then but uh, this heavy old chunk here is way more solid than ever the old thing was it's around here somewhere it's, it was a flimsy bit of metal that was just been hand bent into shape so what I'm doing here is far more than ever there was so I know it's going to work.
tacked on. Weld it up. Oh, lovely. <laughs> yeah, I see you That's the uh, upstand tacked onto the, the base. I'm going to grind off the uh, welding flush with that now and then think about whether I want to plate across as well from one piece to the other so that I can then weld a plate along where the spine and the base U-channel meet as well, just to give it some more strength. I'm pretty sure it's already far better than it was on the old trailer. And uh, the welding's getting slightly better. It's coming back to me. Not that it looks very neat. I went back over to Deal yesterday where I got the welder from and I bought some 2.5mm welding rods. It's only half a mil different but it's the maximum that's uh, rated for the welder I've got according to the scale on the side where you set the amperage and they do work better. It took a little bit of getting used to. I tried it out yesterday evening on some scrap stuff. It do take a little bit of getting used to because I think it's right is right on the limit of there. I think it's not so easy to strike an arc with them but uh, the results are much better this is the best side of the two so I'm showing this one but the other one I've run about three or four feet along just because aha uh -huh. this may need to start now yeah I've run three or four beads along the other one but uh, this one was pretty good on its own so uh, I've just left this one I think there's a couple of runs in it well that's four tacks down each side of that uh, piece of U-channel with the upstand on and uh, 
it's in place now. I shall actually weld it up properly once the boat's back onto the stands. I was talking about putting some strengthening plates on, but I'm looking at it now and thinking that maybe it doesn't need them. If I change my mind, I can put them on. I've got some scrap stuff left that I can do that with, but for now, I'm quite happy with the way it's going. It's a case of having faith in welding, I suppose, because it's not like soldering or anything like that. You're actually melting the two or three lots of metal together, both pieces of the work and the filler rod. And it becomes one, so uh, it is pretty strong. And uh, I'm quite pleased with the way it's going again. Since I finished tacking the upstand onto the trailer and uh, thinking about getting the boat back over on its uh, upside down and starting to paint it, I've had a change of mind. I thought about it a little bit and whilst it's on the trailer I can move it out of the garage because I've got to get my car in here sometime and do a bit of an overhaul on the brakes, change the brake handbrake cable especially and um, I can do that over the pit. So rather than uh, tie the boat up again and tie the garage up with the boat in it, I thought I might do that because the car is due in the end of February or beginning of March for its MOT. So if I do that now, it's out of the way and then I can work on the, uh, work on the boat and I don't have to worry about it, how long it takes. So the other day I went out over to uh, the timber merchants and I bought some 6mm ply, which I'm going to show you now. If you remember, some time ago now, I made a, a, um, an arched piece of wood to support the back end of the foredeck. And I've put that back in place. And I've laid the plywood over it to see how it looks. And it gives a nice space underneath for storage of stuff and it's a, a nice curve and it does curve down so it's lower at the front than it is at the back end of it here in the middle so I think I'm gonna carry on with that what I'm gonna do now is go around with a marker and a block of wood and cut it so that it's very proud of the um, the rails but a more manageable size and then have a look at some ideas I've got not just for fixing it on but also for maybe leaving the opening open or maybe shutting in the sides of it maybe shutting in the sides of it and putting a door on it or two doors on it's uh, a case of will it over complicate things or um, or not I don't know but I'll just sort of play around with some ideas of what I could do with that gap there and see if I uh, see if I like what I think or not as the case may be well, there it is trimmed off and uh, I think I might just see if I can get some more clamps on and just leave it like that for a bit now and it'll help to uh, form it it's not um, rigid anyway it uh, it's formed like that quite easily, but uh, it will sort of help to stretch it into place before I start building the frame underneath it to support it, because I think probably I'll have to sort of reach over it at some point, somewhere, and uh, it needs to be supported and strong enough to take that sort of weight. It would have been nice to have sort of been able to flare it around and into the rails somehow but the seats sort of right there where at the end of it and so it'll impinge on that a little bit and it won't be very comfortable to sit on thwart is the real name the proper name technical name but uh, that looks quite nice as it is and because it's sort of rounded it looks better than all the ones I've seen on eBay and the uh, original four deck that was on there 
which was flat as well. It sort of when they when they're flat, they look like they're caved in. I know that the four deck that was on there was quite caved in anyway when when we brought it home, but. Uh, If it's flat, it gives the impression it's caved in, but because that's uh, on, a, on an arc, it looks it looks solid and it looks, it looks better. So I think I'm going to round this episode up now, because I'm not going to do anything more on there until I've done the car. I certainly won't be doing any more to this four deck apart from having it like it is just just there for now because I want to be able to turn it over and it makes it difficult to turn over with that on so I'm not going to be fixing it yet anyway so all that remains for me to say really is and thanks for watching as always and for your comments and I'll see you all again soon cheerio Thank you.